Introduce her, Henry. Yeah. This is my bride of 48 years, Ooh. Shirley. Yeah. I wouldn't have made it without her, and that's for sure. Praise God. God is doing a work of healing, and before long, she's going to be singing again. And uh, we will come back, and we will sing, and God will be glorified. He will be lifted up, and He will be honored, because that is what we do. Amen. Father, I just love you this morning and I thank you for the privilege of being here. I do not take for granted the privilege of standing and sharing what you've laid on my heart for today. Father, take this dirt, mold it, mold it into what you want it to be today. Flow into me, flow through me, that which will glorify the name of Jesus. I will serve you because I love you. You have given, given life to
It's all about you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She's got a real soft voice when it's at its best, so bring it on the thank you. condition to help me and and this great and he wanted to help me he was reaching out trying struggling to try to get up to help me my son was but he was like pinned down he couldn't move and this big evil black tall spirit thing evil looking thing was pulling up yanking me up um and he and he and he hit me threw me to the floor I realized that that was Satan. The enemy was trying to take me down. And this big evil looking thing was just tossed me to the floor. And, and my son couldn't help me. My mother and daddy sat there helpless. I mean, they couldn't help. Um, other faces were in the room, but they were kind of darkened and I couldn't tell who they were. And I jumped up when the enemy threw me to the floor. I jumped up from there. And I threw my finger in his face like this and I said, you will not take me down. You will not take me down. 
and, I, and it was a feeling in me like, I have to fight this struggle myself. And I knew other people pray, and I have always known this. People, other people are praying for me and praying for all of us in need prayer when we need it. But I knew that I was not going to let that big enemy take me down. And, uh, and that was my words to him. And I woke up. That's it. And I said, this enemy is not going to take me Amen. down. And that has kept me... That doesn't ring in my mind constantly, that picture of that terrible dream. But it reminds me that I will not let the enemy take me down. And, uh, and I will stand. There's Yes, it's been tough. And the, and the enemy tried to take me out of this world December 19th on my birthday. But all I could do in that ICU with nurses all around me trying to get my heart to beating again with that machine was all I could do was cry out as I was bending over in pain and reaching out and stuff. I, all I could say, all the words that came out of my mouth were the only words I needed to say. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. It was over and over and over again. It just wasn't one or two. I wasn't timid about it. When you're in that place, folks, you cry out to God. You don't care who's listening. You're talking to the one that matters. That, that Who is listening to you? And all the words were, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. They were able to get my heart back to beating. I was installed a pacemaker um, a day or two, well, an emergency pacemaker right then. But um, the, the nurses would come in in the next day or two, different ones that were still there, and they would say, it is so good to see you're still here. And I said, Jesus has got me still here. That's why I'm still here. I called him, he heard me, and... I'm still here. Amen. For the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now she said I couldn't sing, but she did, didn't she? <laughs> Amen. She will. I want to sing. She I'm wants tired. to sing. Amen. I've never sung for anybody but the Lord, and He's That's the only it. one I ever will sing for. Amen. All right, let's go to the key of F. And okay. I'll sing this other song. Then I got to pray because the people are going to get hungry in a minute. <laughs> Amen. As long as I have breath, I will praise you, Lord. As long as I can sing, I will sing your praise.
Father and the Lord, thank you. When I called Brother Mike a week and a half ago and said, Brother, I would like to come and minister on the 20th. I believe the Lord has given me a word. He said, that's Palm Sunday. Well, I hadn't even thought about it being Palm Sunday. If you're not pastoring, you don't think about that as much as you do when you are pastoring. And I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to turn this on. Maybe. <laughs> and on. There you go. I am on. Yes. Now, I've been turned on for a while. <laughs> and Brother Mike said, well, that's Palm Sunday. I said, well, Brother, I hadn't even thought about that. And I know that pastors normally like to preach on Palm Sunday and on Easter. But he graciously opened the door and allowed us to come. And I believe I have a word from the Lord, from the Lord today. Amen. 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 It's not about me. It's all about Jesus. I want yes. you to understand. Yes. I understand that. Yes. I have said here, and I will say it again, and I'll probably say it again when I come back if we give another chance to come back again. I'm dirt. I understand that. From dust I was formed. But, but, one day I became a new creation in Christ Jesus. You have in Bibles, and, you, and, you, and brother, I had not even thought about this being Palm Sunday, but this is where the Lord wanted me to go. Amen. Go with me, please, to John chapter 12. Verse 20. Say amen when you get there. Amen. What about the rest of it? Amen. Amen. It's page 1598 in my Bible. John 12, 20. Now there were certain Greeks among those who came to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip who was from Bethsaida of Galilee and asked him, saying, Sir, I'm reading from the New King James. They didn't say that. I said that. <laughs> they said, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Yeah. Then Philip came and told Andrew, and Andrew in turn, and Philip went and told Jesus, and Jesus answered them, saying, but the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. Amen. Amen. At the time that the Greeks came to Philip, and then Philip and Andrew went to Jesus, Jesus had just experienced some of the most glorious times of his ministry. Lazarus raised from the dead. What an exciting time. Not only was he dead, but had been dead and in the grave four days according to what the word said. He was already in the stinking position. Jesus heard about it, heard that he was sick and he stayed where he was for two more days. And then he traveled to where Lazarus was. He was dead, dead, dead. 
And it's interesting to note what Jesus said about all of this when He came to the sisters. He said, this has happened to glorify the Father. Listen to me. This has happened to glorify the Father. Surely your sickness is to glorify the Father. The pain that you're going for through is to glorify the Father. The things that you have to endure is for the glory of God if you give Him glory. Amen. Or if you sing gloom, despair, and agony on me, deep, dark depression, and what is it? some kind of misery. Yeah. What are you doing with what's going on in your life? I believe that I'm going to win. I've said here before and I'll tell you again. I don't know what depression is. I've never been there. I've had some hard stuff that I've gone through. Most of it was my own stupidity but because of stupid decisions that I have made. But even at the deepest and darkest hour of the things that I was going through, I never knew depression because I knew who was inside of me. And I knew that if I repented and came back to God and asked God to forgive me and started walking again in His righteousness, that He would receive glory and honor and praise. I'm here this morning because of His glory. Jesus said, this is so the Father will receive glory. And when He called Lazarus from that tomb, there was a whole lot of shouting going on. For the glory of God. It was not about Jesus. And this is where I'm going. I want you to stay with me about where I'm going this morning. After that, Mary washed the feet of Jesus and surely had written a beautiful song about that experience. Yes. I worship you, Almighty God, there is none like you. Yes. Wow. That's what Mary was doing as she washed the feet of Jesus. Listen to me. His friend, Mary, the sister of Lazarus, Wash the feet of Jesus. She who was a friend and a dear friend became a servant. She assumed a servant position. Hello? Yeah. Stay with me. Keep that in your mind. Then later on, within the next seven days, Jesus comes to Jerusalem. Sitting on the colt of a donkey that had never been ridden before. Hello? And that donkey just behaved like it should because the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords was on top of him. Amen. And as he came into the city of Jerusalem, the people began to worship and praise. They had heard what had happened to Lazarus. They had heard of the miracles Jesus had performed. They had heard of all of the good things that he had accomplished. The Pharisees were disturbed. They said, if we don't stop this guy, the whole world is going to follow him. Hello? Yeah. Because of the power of God that was resident in the life of Jesus Christ. And it was resident there because Jesus took time to get along with the Father. And that's another whole message. <coughs> I'm not going there this morning. But if you want the power of God, you've got to spend time in the presence of God. Amen. If you want the power of God in your life, if you want the blessings of God in your life, you have to take time to get alone and come into the presence of God and let Him fill you with His power and His presence because His presence is power. Hello? I love in the book of Acts where the disciples had gone out and even as they walked down the streets, the shadow of the disciples who had been in the presence of God through the Holy Spirit, even the mere shadow passing over the people, they got healed. Amen. Ooh, Amen. There's power in the presence of God. 
All of this is happening, and I cannot try to picture in your mind the great explosion of worship and praise and adoration that was poured out that day as Jesus rode into Jerusalem. Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hallelujah! Amen. They were not quiet. They said, oh, there was excitement yes. because they were in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. And they understood because of the miracles that had been transpired by His presence. Hello? Hello. I promise you, you get in the presence of God, the Holy Ghost fire will come on this place. And when this place starts burning in the Holy Ghost fire, people are going to be knocking down your doors to get in here. But if you continue to go on and not get in His presence, oh, I'm not preaching this, I'm not saying that, I didn't. I did. You don't have any power without getting in His presence. There's no fire. There's no fire. Until you take time to be in His presence, Jesus, even the Son of God, knew the importance of getting along with God. Spending time in His presence. You want to transform this community? Start fasting and praying. Set aside a day when you're going to fast the whole congregation. Set a day outside when the church doors will be open from 5.30 in the morning until people want to go home at night. Let them come and go and come into the presence of God. And this place will be turned upside down because of the power and the presence of God that will be in here. Miracles will happen when you take time to get into the presence of God. Now, let's fast forward. Let's fast forward to 2016. The evangelist is used mightily of God. The TV camera to roll on. This great man of God is coming to the Gulf Coast. You need to get out and hear him. You need to go and see how God is going to use him. He is a mighty man of God that would be interviewed on every local television program with the main, mighty man of God. Stay with me, okay? Please stay with me. But when Jesus was approached by some foreigners yeah. in Jerusalem who said, I want an interview with this man that had just come into town on this donkey. There's something mighty going on. I need to talk to this man. And when Philip and Andrew came to Jesus. He did not lose focus. Stay with me. The Holy Ghost is talking. He did not lose focus of his purpose. He did not fall in love with the publicity. He did not fall in love with the adoration. He did not fall in love with the image that was being projected by the people. Hello? Are you still with me? God is wanting us to hear something today. It's all about Him. It's all about His will. It's all about being who He wants you to be. Jesus did not lose focus. When they came to him and the TV cameras were rolling, the, new, the Daily Herald had their reporters out there. WLOX, WWATA, WATA, WATA, BOOTA, BOOTA, WATA, and all this other stuff were all there with their cameras rolling. If Donald Trump doing an interview. Now don't get, don't get, now I ain't going to it. I ain't going there. I ain't going political. I'm just saying. Try to picture in your mind what was happening at that time. Where Jesus was. What position he was in. 
He could have assumed and received the glory that was being shouted at him. But in turn, he said, I got to get this off of me. The focus has to get away from me. Are you with me? I've got to turn the people's eyes to the source. Why am I here? Why is this going on? It's not about me. It's about Him. Except a kernel of wheat fall to the ground. Not only does it fall down in humility to the ground, and get covered up and stamped on. Amen. It has to die. Yeah. It has to lose its identity. God is looking for a church that is willing to lose its identity and take on His identity of humility before the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the God of creation. God is looking for a people who are willing to say, yes, I will die. I surrender who I am, what I am, to be what He wants me to be. Except a kernel of wheat fall to the ground and die. It remains alone. How many of you want to be alone? Raise your hand. Hello. It had been said of me I'm a loner, but I'm not. I love people. I'm not afraid to be who I am. I'm not afraid to be who I've been called to be. I'm not afraid to be different in Him. Not just to be weird, but to be different in Him. Uh, except a kernel of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abides alone. But, I like the buts in the Bible. Because every time you see a but in the Bible, it's something good that's going to fall. Wow, that sounded right there. Okay. It abides alone unless it's willing to die. But if it dies, it will spring forth. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And bring yes. the harvest. Yes. Oh, are you listening? Yes. Are you listening? Yes. God is saying to us this morning, Die! So you can multiply! Mm. Write it down. Mm. I'm going to die so He can multiply. Mm. Through me. In me. To me. I'm going to be what Jesus was. A servant. What does a servant do? Serve. There you go. Yeah. There you go. That's written there. Servants. They serve. They do not live to themselves, but they live for another identity. Are you with me? God is calling His church. I'm sorry, but there had been wrong doctrine preached for about 40 years. And it, that doctrine is one that lifts up man That's right. to the point that people start telling God what He had to do. Hello? But what I read in the Word, Jesus became a servant of His Father in heaven. And He served His Father, but He served the fellow men around Him too. Are you willing to become a servant? I ain't going to be nobody's slave. Well, hello, I go to hell then. Hello? I ain't going to be nobody. If you're going to be in the kingdom, you're going to be a slave. Yeah. Right. A love slave. You do it not because you have to, you do it because you want to. Amen. Yeah. There you go. Hello? There you go. Why do you want to? Because you've been in His presence. Hallelujah. 
And when you come into his presence, you bow down before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And you say to him, I will serve you because I love you. You have taken that which was dead and given it life. I was nothing before you found me. You have given life to me. I was nothing. I thought I was something until I came into the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And when I came into His holiness and His glory, I came to understand that I was covered with filthy rags because of His holiness. But, but, when we humble ourselves before Him, He raises us up. But we're still servants. I want to uh, listen to what the Holy Spirit's saying today, folks. Listen to what He's saying. Get off of your throne. Amen. Get off of your throne. And put Him back on His throne. Are you listening? Are you understanding what the Holy Spirit's saying today? Ooh. Jesus, at the very height, the pinnacle of the public ministry. I mean, people were talking about this. The Pharisee that said, if we don't do something about this guy, <laughs> the whole world is going to be converted to him. Yeah. And he was saying, it ain't about me, it's about the Father. That's right. It's not about my glory, it's about His glory. Amen. And that's what he's saying to the church today. Get off of your throne and put me back on mine. Yeah. Serve because you love. <laughs> yes. Except a kernel of wheat fall to the ground. Unless you're willing to fall at the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. Unless you're willing to fall at the feet of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and say to Him, I surrender who I am to be what you want me to be. God is looking for a people who will say to Him, it's not about me, Lord. It's not about what I need or what I want. It's all about you and what you want in me and through me. I've said it here before. And the Holy Spirit keeps telling me to tell you. So I'm going to do it. Until you tell me I can't come back anymore. And then I'll stand out on the street and do it. There you go. All right. When you, this church, when you, the body of Christ, they call Lighthouse Fellowship, and those who you are visiting, if you don't come here all the time, you go somewhere else, they may God still speak to you. Yeah. If you will humble yourselves, if you will fall at the feet, of the king. <clears throat> Life will begin. When the old man is pushed aside, then God can take what's inside that seed and multiply that one. <clears throat> I preached a, a, a sermon several years ago in El Salvador and I actually got a, a, a an uh, ear of corn. And I passed it around the congregation while I was preaching. I said, count how many kernels are on that one ear of corn. Mm -hmm. I think it came out to be like 368 or something like that. 368. That's just one ear on that. How many other ears are on that stalk of corn? That came from one seed. Yeah. There you go. Can I be brutal? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not producing, you're worthless. Oh boy. Yeah. That seed gets thrown out in the street. Yeah. 
yeah. gets thrown in the fire. Mm -hmm. If you are not reproducing, hello, yes, I'm getting hard. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm telling you everything I tell you in love. Bring it out. I'm telling you, unless you are reproducing, you're useless in the kingdom of God. Please understand. I understand the body of Christ. And each member has its individual function in the body of Christ. But that function is to build up the body and build up the kingdom. <laughs> it's not about, ooh, I am the hand. I'll slap you down. <laughs> I am the mouth. I will talk so pretty. I will put you in your place. It's not about the eye. Yeah. I can see. It's not about that wonderful brain that God placed in your head. I am so smart. No. It's about humbling that brain. Humbling those eyes. Surrendering that mouth. Surrendering those hands. To do the work. <coughs> oh, hallelujah. Isn't God good? Oh, yeah. That he will take dirt like we are when we humble ourselves before Him and surrender who we are to Him, He will take what we are and what He has placed in us from the time we were in our mother's womb and He will empower it by the infilling and the power of the Holy Spirit and cause us to be what He designed us to be in the body of Christ. Oh boy. Praise God. Ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There he is. Praise God. Let me read on. When it dies, when it dies, when it dies, if it dies, if it dies, it produces much fruit or grain. He who loves this life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. <coughs> and where I am, there my servant will be also. If any man serves me, him, my heavenly Father, will honor. Are you listening? Yes. To what God is saying. I've said it here before and I'll say it again. God is looking for people who will unequivocally say to Him when He says, follow me. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Without saying, where are you going? And how will I be provided for Who's going to take care of my wife and kids? Who's going to take care of my college bill? Who's going to just say yes? And contrary to what too many television evangelists have told the church, Amen. he's looking for people who want to serve him because they love him. Yes. Not serving because of what they're going to get. Amen. Send me a hundred dollars and the Lord will bless it a hundredfold. So I can go buy me a golden Cadillac. <laughs> Hello? I'm, I'm, I'm being real this morning. We serve Him because of who He is, not because of what He will give. We serve Him because we love Him, not because He's going to give me a new Cadillac. Incidentally, I need a car. Anybody got one you want to give away, I'll take it. But anyway, amen. Uh, God's going to give me what I need. He always has. I can tell you miracle after miracle after miracle of God just speaking to somebody and saying, you need a car here, take my keys and go. Amen. It's happened to me multiple times. You know why? Because I'm giving away cars too. 
Hello. Hello. And I didn't do it because I was looking for a Cadillac in, in exchange for a Chevette. <laughs> Hello. Because he told me to, I in obedience did what he told me to do. God is looking for people who will serve him not because of what they're going to get, but they're going to serve him because what he in them can do through them to reproduce Jesus. It's not about you. It's all about Him. Reproducing Jesus. He said, you are the light of the world. He didn't He said, I'm the light of the world. But He said, also, you're the light of the world. How do we become the light of the world? By allowing the light inside of us. Yes. <coughs> I've been, I woke up at 3 o'clock this morning. Okay? I'm good. There you go. Me and the Lord spent a lot of time talking about what's going to go on here today. He's looking for people who will humble themselves. Pat, you said it. Humble themselves. If you wait to be humbled by God, it's a painful experience. I know I've been there. Yes. Marvin Gorman preached a sermon many years ago. Fall on the rock or the rock will fall on you. Hello. Humble yourselves and pray and seek His face. Not your will. Not your desires. Hello? God, I'm going to serve you because when I serve you, I'm going to get me a new house on the lake with a boat tied up to the pier with a 45 horse Johnson on the back of it and fishing rods already in it and the bait to go fishing. <laughs> Are you going to give me a golf cart with my golf clubs on the back and pay my country club fee for a year or for the rest of my life? I sure don't want to serve you, Lord. No, 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 no. He looks for people who will own themselves and say to him, I'm willing to die. Yeah. There you go. To be what you want me to be. Jesus was saying to those that were following him and to those Greeks that had come to see Jesus. If you're going to see me, you're going to have to understand something. You're going to have to die to who you are to become what I want you to be. I have died to myself to become what the Father wanted me to be. If you will follow me. And that's not just following him to a place. Stay with me. Are you willing to follow him to the mountain? and get along with God to spend time in the Father's presence? Are you willing to wake, walk away from fame and glory to be obedient to the call of God? Are you willing to follow Him into suffering? Are you willing to follow Him to be rejected? Are you willing to follow Him to be whipped and beaten and ridiculed and stoned and burned at the stake? Are you willing to follow Him until death because of the cross of Calvary? Jesus said to his disciples a little bit later in the book of John, they hated me, they're going to hate you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. Why is the surprise about the persecution that's going on now? Hello? The word says it's going to happen. But the good news is, if you die, if you die, when you die, when you die, the seed will be multiplied. The harvest is coming. Look under the field. Don't look at the walls. Don't look at the walls. Look at the fields. Get your eyes out for what's going on here. Get your eyes on a world that is lost. 
that need somebody to tell them about Jesus? Hello? Hello. My time up yet? What time is it, Pat? Uh, eight o'clock. Good. I've got about three more there you go. hours. Amen. <laughs> uh, but this is what is involved in following him. Yeah. How far are you willing to follow him? How much are you willing to release to him? How low are you willing to bow? Are you willing to lay on the ground at his feet? Can everybody hear me in the back? I've calmed it down a little bit. Can you hear me? No. Are you willing to lay at his feet and surrender all that you are to be all that he would have you be? Or Jesus said, I've got to die. He was speaking about his death in this particular scripture. At the same time, he is saying, follow me. Hello. Right after he said, except the kernel of wheat fall on the ground and die, it abides alone. He's saying, follow me. Are you listening? Follow me. Follow me to death. So that you can live and reproduce and bring forth fruit. I believe that God is calling the church Amen. again, yes. anew, to say to Him, I surrender all that I am so that I can be all you would have me be. Now, I'm going to finish with this. He said, follow me. If you love me. If you don't love me, don't follow me. If you love me, follow me. Because if you love me, you'll be willing to give up your own identity to become who I want you to be. If you follow me, now listen, this is the good news. I beat you up pretty bad, okay? I understand that. But there's good news. He said, if you follow me, if you're obedient to me, if you're obedient to the call, my Father will honor you. Amen. I want to be honored by God. Amen. Amen. I don't care. In fact, I have been embarrassed on more than one occasion in ministry when people would say, oh, what a sacrifice it is for you to be a missionary. No, it's an honor. It's not a sacrifice. Amen. I've never considered it a sacrifice. That's never come out of my lips. It's not a sacrifice to be obedient. It's not a sacrifice. Because it's about him, not about me. It's about his purpose, not about mine. And I've been hard-headed. I've told you this before when I preach here. I was hard-headed. I didn't want to be a preacher. The last thing I wanted to be is a preacher. The very last thing on my list of things to do. My bucket list did not include being a preacher. But I'm here. Because he called. I listened. I surrendered who I was to be who he wanted me to be. <laughs> he said, follow me. And I've tried my best. There have been some times I took big trails, got off a good trail, but he brought me back. Like I say, either you fall on the rock, the rock's going to fall on you. He has a way. He loves us so much, he's willing to discipline us. Yes. Hello, you love your kids? Discipline them. That's another sermon. That's not this one. Jesus said, if you follow me in obedience, my Father, the creator of the earth, the ruler of the universe, will honor you. Can I just tell you about the praise of men? <laughs> One day they'll love you, the next day they'll talk about you so bad you look like a ragged old dog that's got mange. But your father will honor you. And that's the honor I'm looking for. I want to hear him say when I stand before him, well done, good, faithful servant. 
in the Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. But it can only happen when we're willing to die. You will never live until you're willing to die. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 I'm almost through. I got the introduction now. There you go. <laughs> I beseech you, brethren, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice. A what? A sacrifice. Sacrifice means you're giving up something. But he didn't say a dead sacrifice. Are you listening? A living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable Reasonable. Reasonable what? Service. What? Service. 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 In order to be giving service, you have to become a servant. Mm. And do not be conformed to this world. Do not. Do not become conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your your what? Mind. What? Mind. Oh. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. Renewing your mind means that you have surrendered, you've become a servant, and you've said to him, take my mind and make it like Jesus' mind. Wow, that's big. I'm not going there, but that's a good sermon too. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? And I like to take the and out of it. So that you may prove that good, acceptable, perfect will of God. They're all incorporated into one. They're not three separate identities. Your sacrifice can only be perfect when it's good and acceptable. And when it is perfect, it will be good and acceptable. If it is not perfect, then it is not good and acceptable. That's another sermon. <laughs> I'm trying to be for you. For I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, do not think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but think soberly as God has dealt each one a measure of faith. Hmm. For as many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ, individual members of one another. Hello? <coughs> this is what the Lord told me to tell you today. You're a member of someone else. Whether you like it or not. We tied together. Because we're part of the same body. You can't function without me properly. And I can't function without you properly. So do your job so I can do my job. Hello? The individual members depend on each other to become the body of Christ. This hand can learn sign language, but it can't talk. This ear can hear the voice of God, but it can't talk. This mouth can speak the word of God, but it can't hear. These eyes can see the power of God. Hello? But they can't hear it. We're the body of Christ. Individual members. Oh, Lord. Individual members of one another. I love that. I'll be honest. I had never seen it just like I saw it when I was preparing for today. We're tied together, folks. That's right. That's right. Start treating each other like 
you're me. And I'm you. Hello? Start treating each other as we are each other. My, my brother Ken Bailey, I love this man. We've known each other since the early 80s. Late 70s, early 80s. When he's sick, I know it. And he'll tell you this over the years. I call him and say, what's going on? Why? Because we're members of the same body. And when he's happy, I'm happy. When he's sad, I'm sad. When he's sick, I feel his infirmities and pray for them. Amen. That they will be healed. Amen. You understand that the individual parts of your body work together to heal the whole body? <coughs> We've learned through Shirley's sickness there are functions of individual parts of the body that help heal the body. Amen. Hello? <coughs> are you hearing what God's saying to the church this morning? Heal each other. Quit destroying each other. Work together for the glory of God, not for your own vain glory. Work for the glory of God. Work for the kingdom of God. That's another message i got to go on, right? Amen. <laughs> Having different gifts according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion of our faith. Or ministering, let us use it in ministering. He who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberality. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Claim to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another. In brotherly love and honor and giving preference to one another. Not lacking in diligence. That's that word again. Not lacking in diligence. Servant in spirit. Serving the Lord. When you die to yourself, you become a servant to God and to each other. That's right. Amen. Hello. Mm, I'm moving on. Some will say, how are you raised up from the dead? And what body do they become? Foolish one, what you sow is not made alive unless it dies. Are you listening? What you sow is not made alive unless it dies. Mm. I'm going down these roads because God told me to do it. If you're sowing to be seen, it's going to die. If you're sowing to be seen, it's going to die, but it's not going to bring forth fruit. It's just going to die. It will not bring forth fruit. If you're sowing to be seen, sowing to be seen is not of God. You sow that God is glorified. Hello? Are you still with me? I'm hurrying. I really am. I haven't been here in a while, so I got... There you go. Amen. <laughs> what you sow, you do not sow that body. You do not sow that body that shall be, but a mere grain. Perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he pleases and to each seed its own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men and another kind of animals and another of fish and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies, but the glory of the celestial one and the glory of her terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun and another of the moon and another of the stars. One star differs from another in star in glory. 
Also, so also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption, but raised in corruption. It is sown in dishonor, but raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, but raised in power. Are you getting what God is saying? It is sown in a natural body. It is raised in a supernatural body. There is a supernatural and a natural body. So as it is written, the first man became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Wow. However, the spirit is not first, but the natural, and after the spiritual. Mm, did you hear that? And after the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. Now listen. Listen. The second man is of the Lord from heaven. As man was of dust, so also there are those who are made of dust. And as the heavenly man, also those who are heavenly. Wow. As we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. You can't become heavenly until you're willing to die. You're not, you cannot become heavenly until you're willing to lose the fleshly identity. Amen. I have preached what God has given me. And I am through. Father, take these words that I have spoken under the anointing of your Holy Spirit and under His direction plant them deep in our heart and in our spirits and in our minds. Teach us. <laughs> show us. Empower us to be what you have called us to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, <laughs> oh yes, Father, it's all about you not about me. Amen. They sang a song at Billy Graham's Crusades. It was always the same song at the end. I surrender all. All to Him I freely give. Are you willing to surrender all this morning? If you are, stand to your feet. I'm going to pray for you.